Hello, today I wanted to talk about 4603 of the Texas Penal Code, which is titled Places Weapons Prohibited. Uh, for our purposes, generically, it's kind of the gun-free zones that are automatic gun-free zones, things like schools and courts, but we're going to go into great depth here about the statute and what it says. Uh, first of all, for 2021 constitutional carry, they amended sections A, C, E1, E2, and G, and they added sections A2, A3, A4, and G2. So you need to be aware of that if you're looking at an older penal code. I know as of today, the Texas statutes still do not reflect these changes. So I'm having to kind of piecemeal from the legislative stuff and the old uh, code book. Section A reads, a person commits an offense if the person, again, intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly, three different standards. What's missing from there? Negligently. And that's a key. We'll talk about that in a second. Possesses or goes with a firearm, location restricted knife, club, or prohibited weapon listed in 4605A. So you need to look at that statute to see what weapons are there. So briefly, 4605A is explosive weapons, machine guns, short barrel firearms, armor piercing ammunition, chemical dispensing device. Now that's interesting. So basically pepper spray is probably uh, not allowed. <laughs> Zip guns, tire deflation devices, firearm silencer, or improvised explosive device. So that's what they're talking about when they say prohibited weapons. Okay, subsection one, on the physical premises of a school or educational institution, any grounds or building on which activity sponsored by a school or educational institution is being conducted, or passenger transportation vehicle of a school or educational institution, whether the school is edu or educational institution is a public or private, Okay, then it says, unless pursuant to written regulations or written authorization of the institution, or B, the person possesses or goes with a concealed handgun that the person is licensed to carry under the, the uh, license to carry statute, and no other weapon to which this section applies on the premises of an institution of higher education or private or independent institution of higher education, or any grounds or building on which an activity sponsored by the institution is being conducted or in a passenger transportation vehicle of the institution. That's a whole lot of words. So number one, the obvious thing is you cannot open carry on a campus, period. And basically what it's saying is constitutional carry does not apply here. But if you have a license to carry under Texas law, then you can go onto the college areas and uh, you'd be okay as long as it's concealed. And again, I don't want to get into arguments about what constitutes concealed. Just don't go there. Don't wear an open carried gun with a grocery bag over it or something like that. I mean, I get it, it's not necessarily illegal to do that, but that's not really what they intended, and somebody is going to arrest you for doing that, even if you ultimately get it overturned, it's just not worth it. Number two, on the premises of a polling place on the day of an election or while early voting is in progress. Number three gives us all grief on the premises of any government court or offices utilized by the court unless pursuant to written regulations or written authorization of the court. And so the question always comes up, does that mean the whole courthouse or does it just mean the courtrooms within the court? Most of your counties are running metal detectors at the entrances and not letting folks in. There may be multi-use rooms inside the courthouses that would not be prohibited, but they're not letting you in. Um, you know, it, it's a difficult fight if you're trying to fight that. Good luck to you. <laughs> Four, on the premises of a racetrack. Five, 
in or into the secured area of an airport. Six, within 1,000 feet of premises, the location of which is designated by the Texas Department of Criminal Justice as a place of execution under Article 4319, Code of Criminal Procedure, on a day that a sentence of death is set to be imposed on the designated premises and the person received notice that A, going within a thousand feet of the premises with the weapon listed was prohibited or possessing a weapon listed under the subsection was prohibited basically they're not wanting you to go where they're having an execution you know within a thousand feet then they added in all the 46.035 locations here and so these are all new statutes I'll read them to you seven on the premises of a business that has a permit or license issued under basically a place that sells alcohol <laughs> um, if they derive more than 51 percent of their revenue from alcohol for on-premises consumption okay so that's that's a key what we have seen in the past is a lot of people putting up the 51% sign that were not 51% businesses. Uh, you can report them. I'll leave it up to you if you think it's wise to carry past that 51 sign when you know it's not a proper 51 sign. Uh, I'm just telling you there are people that put that sign up that don't even sell alcohol at all, let alone folks that sell it for on-premises consumption. Uh, TABC maintains a list online of places that are 51 percent so you can utilize that resource if you have any question about whether or not but they're supposed to have the sign up if they sell it and they're not supposed to have the sign up if they don't. And you will recall if you've seen them before the old sign which is probably no longer in effect used to say the unlicensed possession of a handgun, yada, 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 if they sold alcohol. That's changed now. Eight, on the premises where a high school, collegiate, or professional sporting event or interscholastic event is taking place, unless the person is a participant in the event and a firearm, location restricted knife, club, or prohibited weapon is used in the event. It's interesting that they mention high school, collegiate, and professional, but they don't mention junior high or grade school or anything like that. Um, uh, just uh, as a side note, I would not recommend taking it into a junior high or grade school event because you know you're probably in violation of the previous part of the statute. This may be referring more to like outside sports arenas, you know, high schools and colleges typically have stadiums and stuff off campus or whatever. Uh, number nine on the premises of a correctional facility. Ten on the premises of a civil commitment facility. Eleven on the premises of a hospital licensed under chapter 241 health and safety code or on the premises of a nursing facility licensed under 242 health and safety code. Unless the person has written authorization of the hospital or nursing facility administration as appropriate. 12. On the premises of a mental hospital as defined by section 571.003 Health and Safety Code. Unless the person has written authorization of the mental hospital administration. 13. In an amusement park or 14 in the room or rooms where a meeting of a government entity is held if the meeting is an open meeting subject to chapter 551 of the government code and if the entity provided notice as required by that chapter so those sections used to be only applicable to license carriers because folks that didn't have a license were prohibited from carrying in all those places under 4602 now the 4602 allows folks without a license to carry outside of their home and vehicle. They had to add these in here. And just like before, 46035 was, you know, some folks say intentionally written to be confusing. And regardless of that, it was written in a confusing manner that most folks did not understand because there were 
exceptions. So on one hand it would say it was illegal to carry and then it would say those don't apply unless they have the sign up. So most folks missed that last part because it was buried way down at the bottom of the statute. A2 says notwithstanding section 4602A-5, a license holder commits an offense if the license holder carries a partially or wholly visible handgun regardless of whether the handgun is holstered on or about the license holder's person under the authority of subchapter under the authority of the license to carry statutes and intentionally or knowingly displays the handgun in plain view of another person one on the premises of an institution of higher education or private or independent institution of higher education or on any public or private driveway, street, sidewalk, or walkway, parking lot, parking garage, or other parking area of an institution of higher education or private or independent institution of higher education. Basically I read that as don't open carry on campus, license or no license, period. A3 says notwithstanding subsection A or section 46 a5 a license holder commits an offense if the license holder carries a handgun on the campus of a private or independent institution of higher education in this state that has established rules regulations or other provisions prohibiting license holders from carrying handguns pursuant to the government code or on the grounds or building in which activity sponsored by such institution is being conducted or in a passenger transportation vehicle of such institution regardless where the handgun is concealed, provided the institution gives effective notice under 3006 of the Penal Code. So what that's saying again, no open carry, basically open carry on any kind of campus is probably illegal unless you're a police officer, a judge, or a prosecutor with a carry permit. So open carry is going to always create problems for you because people can see your weapon and you're going to have a lot more problems uh, with so-called gun-free zones with open carry than with concealed. If you carry concealed in those areas and they have the proper signage up then you'd be in violation of that. Uh, if they don't have the signage up then you are legal to carry concealed in those locations if you have a carry permit but not for folks carrying under constitutional carry. A4 notwithstanding subsection A or section 4602A5, a license holder commits an offense if the license holder intentionally carries a concealed handgun on a portion of premises located on the campus of an institution of higher education in this state on which the carrying of concealed handguns prohibited by rules, regulations, or other provisions established under the government code provided the institution provides effective notice under 30 odd 6 with respect to that portion. So again, they're talking about concealed carry on campuses of higher learning, a, aka college campuses. If they put up the, the 30 odd 6 notice, then arguably you can't carry there. Subsection B was not amended, and subsection B says it's a defense prosecution under A1 through 4 that the actor possessed a firearm while in the actual discharge of his official duties as a member of the armed forces or National Guard or a guard employed by a penal institution or an officer of the court. And this is an interesting statute there, okay? Um, a1 through 4, we've talked about where those places are. Uh, so basically, if you're in your official duties with the Armed Forces, National Guard, or a guard employed by a penal institution, obviously those don't apply to you. The one that's very interesting is Officer of the Court. That is a legal term of art, and that means lawyers. So a strict reading of B says lawyers are not affected by subsections A1 through A4. That is not how it is interpreted by most of our court deputies and so forth. They treat that as officer of the court as being like a court deputy or bailiff, which is not what the statute says. So 
and they did not change that so that has been in effect I want to say for 20 plus years now it's been worded the exact same so those of you that are lawyers are officers of the court arguably if you were ever arrested for violating a1 through 4 you're exempt as long as you're doing your official duties as an attorney which is very broad obviously back to C which was amended number one says amusement park means a permanent indoor or outdoor facility or park where amusement rides are available for use by the public it is located in a county with a population of more than 1 million encompasses at least 75 acres and surface area is enclosed with access only through controlled entries is open for operation more than 120 days each calendar year and has security guards on the premises at all times this term does not include any public or private driveway street sidewalk walkway parking lot parking garage or other parking area so that is critical to understand that definition is very limited in scope to only a few places uh, one if the county does not have more than a million residents you're done there uh, the park has to have at least 75 acres of property uh, and then all the other limits so you're probably talking about six flags and maybe one or two other places in Texas I, but offhand I, I can't think of any C2 says institution of higher education and private or independent institution of higher education have the meanings assigned by section 61003 of the education code I don't have that code handy so I don't know what those are I'm guessing it's pretty broad and probably covers most colleges subsection 3 license holder means a person licensed to carry I mean basically it used to be the concealed handgun license and then it became the license to carry once we had open carry that's what they're talking about there Subsection 4, premises, means a building or portion of a building. The term does not include any public or private driveway, street, sidewalk, or walkway, parking lot, parking garage, or other parking area. That's crucial because they typically talk about premises, and what they're talking about whenever they say the premises of something is inside of buildings. They're not talking about the sidewalks, the walkways, parking lots, etc. Keep in mind though, this confuses a lot of folks, the courts, federal court, Fifth Circuit for example, have ruled that like post office parking lots are prohibited areas under federal law. So if you have a carry permit and you are trying to navigate like that, you're best to not park on any kind of federal property, VA, post office, etc. because you might accidentally be violating federal law even though under state law you'd be fine subsection 5 it looks like they deleted part and then they changed it to just say secured area means an area of an airport terminal building to which access is controlled by inspection of persons and property under federal law so that's pretty straightforward when you walk through the metal detectors or if you're like me I get randomly selected every time to go through the thing that x-rays you and all that <laughs> can't carry past there it's, however it is a defense to prosecution under that if you possessed at the screening checkpoint for the secured area a handgun that you were licensed to carry so in other words not constitutional carry just licenses and you exited the screening checkpoint for the secured area immediately upon completion of the required screening and notified them that you possessed a handgun what's interesting is I know what they meant to say they meant to say that you leave <laughs> but arguably it could be interpreted that exited could be through the security checkpoint <laughs> because the exact words are exited the screening checkpoint it doesn't say exited the secured area so <laughs> I suspect that'll get changed in the future and I'm not recommending that anybody be the test case on that don't run into the airport with a gun trying to prove a point <laughs> 
it will not turn out well for you. E2 says a peace officer investigating conduct that may constitute an offense under A5, which is the screening checkpoint, may not arrest you unless, one, the officer advises you of the defense available under E1 and gives you the opportunity to exit the screening checkpoint and that you don't immediately exit the checkpoint upon completion. So in other words, you walk into the screening checkpoint, they find your gun, they can't just go, you're under arrest. They have to say, do you understand you may leave now <laughs> and you choose not to leave. If you're that dumb, then you deserve to be arrested. Going back to my original point in section A, which said intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly carry, this is crucial. This is why if you walk into a court or you walk into a school or other area that's prohibited and you have your handgun on you, that's why the officers always ask you if you knew. Because if you accidentally had it on you, it's not a crime. Negligent carry is not a crime. So this is where you kind of get a break. If you forget to leave it in the car or whatever and you enter one of these places, you know, your best bet is to leave and go put it back in the car. But if you are stopped by an officer, you know, that negligent carry is not illegal. So they should allow you to leave and put it back in the vehicle. Subsection D was not changed and basically is applying to the same A5, the airport security area statute. Uh, it's a defense prosecution under A5 that the actor possessed a firearm or club while traveling to or from the actor's place of assignment or in the actual discharge of duties as one, a member of the armed forces or national guard, two, a guard employed by a penal institution, or three, a security officer commissioned by the Texas Private Security Board if A, the actor is wearing a distinctive uniform and B, the firearm or club is in plain view, in other words, open carry only, or four, a security officer who holds personal protection authorization under Chapter 1702 Occupations Code provided that the officer is either A, wearing the uniform of a security officer, including any uniform or apparel, described by 1702-323-D of the Occupations Code and carrying the officer's firearm in plain view or B, not wearing the uniform of a security officer and carrying the officer's firearm in a concealed manner. Basically, security officers is a distinction in Texas law similar to police officers, which we call peace officers. Uh, you can be a licensed security officer and you can have certain carry rights and so that's what that's talking about there is if you qualify under one of those sections uh, basically you can have security officers that are working in the airport there or you can have a personal protection officer which is like a bodyguard basically that's allowed to carry into those areas for when they're working uh, and then of course obviously the, the military and stuff when they're doing their job they're not going to arrest them <laughs> E was also not changed and it's a defense to A5 that the actor checked all firearms as baggage in accordance with federal or state law or regulations before entering the security area. So basically it's legal in most cases to travel with firearms as long as you follow the airline rules and they all are going to have their own particular rules about how to carry a gun on the plane. It's usually got to be checked baggage and it's usually got to be in a locked box and a bunch of other regulations that beyond the scope of this video. F did not change except as provided by E1. It's not a defense to prosecution under the section that the actor possessed a handgun and was licensed to carry under the license to carry statute. In other words, just having a license to carry doesn't allow you to carry into the security area of the airport. Don't know why they even have to be so redundant with some of this stuff. G was modified to say except as provided by subsections G1 and G2 an offense under this section is a felony of the third degree. So basically these are serious crimes to carry into these areas. G1 was not changed. So G1 says if a weapon that is subject to offense is a location restricted knife, the offense is a class C misdemeanor, except that it's a felony of the third degree if it's committed under A1.
A1 as a school, so it's a Class C misdemeanor if you have a knife, unless you're on school grounds, then it's a felony. G2 says offense committed under A8, A10, A11, A13, A-2, A-3, or A-4 is a Class A misdemeanor, and that should uh, basically be similar to what it was when it was 46035. Bottom line, these are the serious crimes, so you really need to be aware of what you're doing. Avoid violating 4603 because it's going to get you into a lot of trouble if you do. So in summary, 4603 differs from 4602 in the sense that 4603 is basically a blanket, no weapons statute. So unless you are a peace officer, a judge or prosecutor with a license to carry, 4603 is going to apply to you and you need to be very aware of it and not violate it because of the serious nature of the charges that would be brought against you. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know and we will continue the series with the other staff.